Let's implement this with a data structure based on lists. We should pause here to clarify how we're going to represent a set as a list. There are several choices we could make. Maybe the simplest one is just to say that the list directly represents a set. So I've written down a comment above the type to say how the list will represent the set. It's not a perfect comment yet, but I'm getting there. The list A1 through AN represents the set A1 through AN. The empty list represents the empty set. Now what I haven't said anything about here yet is what if that list contains duplicate elements? After all, that's one of the key distinctions between the abstraction of a list and the abstraction of a set. Lists can have duplicates. Sets don't really have duplicates. Let's keep that in mind going forward and see how it impacts the operations that we have. Ah, here duplicates become relevant. If I want to compute the size of a set, I could take the length of the list that represents it. But that works only if that list contains no duplicates. If it did, I'd get the wrong answer by using the implementation. Now, maybe this is a good way to implement size, maybe it's not. Let's stick with it and go back to our documentation for the representation type and add to it the restriction that lists can't contain duplicates. This ensures that my implementation of size is correct. Let's pause again. I've implemented add simply as cons, just cons the element onto the beginning of the list. This is a simple implementation, but it's incorrect. Because what if x is already an element of that list? Then I've violated this invariant up here that the list must not contain duplicates. So these two implementations, size and add, can't coexist nicely. We can either have one of them or the other, but not both. For now, let's keep the implementation of size and change the implementation of add to make it correct. Now I'm checking to see whether an element is a member of the list already. If it is, I'm not adding it in, therefore, I, therefore I'm not creating any duplicates. If it's not already an element of the list, then I can cons it. Let's think about the efficiency of these two operations. What's the efficiency of size? It's linear time, because list.length requires linear time in the length of the list. What about add? Well, now every time I want to add an element to the list, I actually have to check the entire list to see if it's there yet or not. That means that the implementation of add is also linear time. So I don't have a particularly efficient implementation of sets here yet. That's OK. We'll live with it for now. To check that, we could even put in the module type annotation to cause OCaml to check and see whether list set really does match the set module. And it, indeed it does. I don't get any compilation errors there. A fair amount of this code could actually be cleaned up and simplified. A fair amount of this code could be cleaned up and simplified. We didn't need to actually take in arguments and apply the functions. We could just directly say that size is list.length and that mem is list.length. 